I'm here with uh, Raquel and Michael. Uh, Raquel is the CEO of uh, Bright Cities, and Michael is the president and CEO of uh, 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 Leading Cities. So why don't you give us an introduction of your organization, what you do? I know you've got, you, you got some collaboration going on between the two entities, and I love the fact that there is something, some stick in the ground, a way to measure smart cities. Give us an overview and then also add as to what exactly is a smart city, what does it mean to you? Hmm. Okay, great. Do you want to... yeah. uh, well, sure. Uh, so Leading Cities is a global nonprofit organization. I do apologize for my voice. It's been three days of nonstop speeches and uh, interviews, but um, we're a global nonprofit organization builds partnerships with cities, universities, private sector, uh, other nonprofits, and directly with community leaders around the world to implement smart city solutions. Frankly, we, we just believe that we need to create a sustainable planet, and you cannot do that without smart cities. Cities occupy about 2 to 4 percent of the land in the world, and yet consume 80 percent of its resources. So smart cities is a way to to uh, bring new technologies, new solutions, and better services to the people living in cities. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, Raquel? So Bright City is a platform for smart city. It's a platform that consolidates data uh, from 160 indicators. So it's open data, so we consolidate that in our platform and we develop a diagnosis on the city. And we connect with a database of solutions uh, that we have. Uh, that we analyze all the solutions on Smart City and we connect both of them to help the public manage to identify the opportunities and the solutions for the problems, the urban problems that we have today. Got it. So, so if you're a city that perhaps may not have heard of, of Bright Cities, um, let's say we take Bucharest because I was born there. <laughs> and, uh, well, I was born in Romania, but um, if you want to be in our platform, what do you have to do? How do you get on your platform? Oh, yes. great. So the platform, it's, uh, it's an online platform, so yes. it's available for anyone to go in. Uh, you just have to go in and home, on the home page and put uh, any city, the name of any city, and get the diagnosis on the city. So uh, we have all cities on the platform. Uh, we are growing the database on the cities. We don't have all, still, we don't have all the data on the, the cities, but we are growing our database on that. So just check that, the city, any city and see how much of information you have and help us to get more, even uh, the connection uh, on that. But you, you can just go to the brightcities.city and see the information and diagnosis that we have on the city. Okay. And the, the database for solutions is for free too, so just get, get in and find the database that we have. It's divided on areas, so we go to the security, environment, education, so it's very easy to use. The platform is designed to be very helpful to understand uh, what are the scores on the areas. So just have to go in the, in the platform and access the information. Got it. Now, Michael, I'm going to switch over to you a little bit sure. and, and talk about the partnership you have in place. You are based in the U.S. and you just had some eye-opening type of stats, uh, leveraging perhaps some of the data from the platform. Talk to us a little bit about the partnership and how do you see this going in the future? Sure. Well, <clears throat> Leading Cities, through our partners um, with, with cities around the world, a, a member network, we have an opportunity to see a lot of the solutions, a lot of the, the, the data that's being created in cities. And that's the real key to smart cities, it's the data. And transforming that data into valuable information that cities can use to improve quality of life in their community. And so Bright Cities is a perfect partner. I mean, they have a powerful platform to bring data to life, to bring it into cities to create change. And so we've, we've partnered to create the, the Leading Cities rating powered by Bright Cities. And this is a rating system. It's unlike anything we have in the smart cities world. Uh, there are many rankings out there, and uh, I don't want to disparage them, but one of the fundamental challenges you have with any ranking is the fact that in order for one city to move up, another city has to move down. And the other challenge is no matter how, we'll use the negative in this case, no matter how bad the group, of, uh, whatever your ranking is, somebody still takes the number one slot. Right, right. So it creates these false impressions of what is a smart city, and it creates a false sense of competition between cities. A rating system is very different. Every city in an ideal world can achieve the A-plus status that we, we would measure. And uh, it therefore allows cities to work more collaboratively. 
And to, to do that, to create that standard, we've created a model or an ideal city, which is taking every one of the 30 plus indicators across 10 different areas, and taking the best scores achieved by any city, and compiling them as if all those best scores came from one city. And that way, they're, for all our real cities, you have an opportunity to see what that ideal is and strive for it, and it's not beyond the realm of possibility because it's another city has already achieved it. Plus, it identifies which city that is. So one city can reach out to another and say, how is it that you scored so high? Tell me, let me learn. And when I do learn, I'll implement it in my city and I'll improve on it. And so the next time, I might be the top scorer. And that standard continues to improve over time. Got it. Thank you for that. Now, if you don't mind, just give us a little more details. How, how often are you doing this as a report, the rating, or is it just online living on the platform? How are you doing this rating? Is it once every year, once every quarter? Well, we've talked about at least once a year. Um, obviously, there's a lot of data to collect. So, um, initially, that's what we're looking at. But Got it. we are also looking at this as a, a kind of a living organism, so to speak. There's, sure. This is our first edition of it. We don't expect it to look the exact same way two, three, four, five editions later. Sure. Um, so yes. we welcome the input of cities, uh, both in terms of uh, maybe there's other indicators we should have included, um, but also and, and most importantly is that uh, if they have a publicly available data source that we may not have identified, Right. to share that with us, but it has to be publicly available. Yeah, yeah. eye-opening. So as a city, if you're doing something, you got to make that public. That's pretty much what yes. the message is. Otherwise, exactly you don't right. exist, at least according to your yeah. your uh, The way that we platform. get the data. Right. So now you have 30 parameters, right? Roughly that your indexes, that you're, you're measuring. Yes. Um, I heard yesterday in one of the sessions there was a, 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 a happiness index. Is that yeah. part of your parameter? <laughs> Not for this first edition, but of course, it's something that we can improve and add in the future. But well, today we're using 30 uh, indicators that are standardized. So there are indicators that we can compare cities on it. Uh, so we uh, in, in 10 areas. Uh, but uh, we are always growing, I think, something that can go towards uh, the happiness. Okay. The, the key there is that we're looking at standardized yeah. indicators right. and the happiness index, which I'm a big fan of, yeah. uh, is, has not been standardized to apply globally. So right. uh, once we get there, that is absolutely something we, we would love to include because it, it falls within the, our definition of a smart city. Sure. So one thing, I guess, if you were to put your predictions ahead, everybody loves that we're at the end of uh, 2019. 2020, if you were to bet on one items, whether it's technology, whether it's process, whether it's some, what's going to make it big in a, in a city, in a smart city, if you will? It's a great question. I, I think the, probably the biggest shift that we'll see starting in 2020 is actually a, a willingness and, and timeliness of cities to start implementing, whatever it may be. Right. And there are some solutions that still need years to be developed. Uh, for instance, autonomous vehicles. I mean, we have them, but there's a whole regulatory framework that needs to be developed and, and a safety framework and all that. So that's going to take time. And, it's, and the, that ball is already in motion. But uh, I think just the, the ability for cities to identify new solutions is a key piece. To, to implementing and improving cities in 2020. Thank you for that. Any yeah, comments? for us too, I think I agree with Mike, is execution, implementation of the solutions. So we're, uh, for next year, Smart City is going to be the 10th edition, so I think it's going to be very special. So, uh, but we are going to, uh, we should focus on the implementation of the solutions. I think that's very key because we're talking about innovation, innovation, we want to see the results on that. So I think the implementation will be there. Got it.